What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. We are starting a new thing. <laughs> I know I feel like I keep saying we're starting new things, but we're actually starting new things. And this is something that I feel like I've been wanting to do for a while. And the thing that we're doing is we're creating three new series on this channel. And you guys are gonna know exactly what to expect, exactly what's coming, and exactly where you wanna put your energy onto this channel. So I know where I'm putting my energy, and I'm gonna let you guys know right now. Number one, this is going to be the Amplify Your Empire Business Development Series. So I know a ton of people who are on my business channel from before are super interested in that kind of stuff. So I wanted to create a series on this channel all about how to amplify your empire, amplify your business, and how to grow your social media. So it's gonna be talking all about that kind of stuff, like the tactical, real things that you're like, I really just wanna know exactly how to do this, this, and that. So that's what this series is going to be all about. But before we get started, I'm gonna tell you guys what the other two series are gonna be. So so the second one is going to be cultivate your calling. So this is going to be all about personal development because you cannot develop a business without developing yourself and developing yourself is something that is one of life's biggest gifts. And I think we all you know, should focus more on developing ourselves so we can grow into the person that we were really meant to be in this world. And I'm so excited about that one. And the last and final one is going to be the Ignite Your Fire motivational series. So this is gonna be encouragement. It's gonna be teaching you about confidence. It's gonna be teaching you about mindset shifts. This is gonna be just really an encouraging and empowering space for all the things that I essentially wanna to say to like if you were a client of mine and you were going through some shit and you really needed some encouragement, that's what that series is going to be about. So I am super pumped about all of them. Let me know which one you're most pumped about in the comment section. We're going to get started this video with a little teaching on content. So this video is called Let's Talk Content. So let's talk content. Okay, so when it comes to content creation for your business or just for your social media accounts, so many people just get stuck and they start thinking that, oh my God, I have to do everything perfectly. I have to do all of this. I have to post Instagram every day. I have to make a YouTube channel. I have to do a podcast. And you feel like you have to do everything. And we're gonna get to that in a second, but I wanna just talk a little bit about the steps to feeling confident about your content creation and not feeling really overwhelmed by all of the things that you have to do. And content is like, your billboard, it's your number one way to get people to find you and to get people to be inspired by you and hear your message and see who you are. So you do have to create content, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming. So we're gonna go on the whiteboard over here real quick. Number one, this might be messy because I have messy handwriting and I don't care, but it's all good. Number one is going to be who is your ideal audience member? Oh, that's not how you spell audience. Who is your ideal audience member? slash client. So this person is going to be up here and you want to name them. So this is going to be Bethany. Bethany, she's my ideal client. I don't know if that's her name, but we're gonna call her Bethany. And you wanna know who they are, right? So the main reason behind knowing who this person is, is that you really have to think about your business as a way to solve someone's problem. And it's not all about, <laughs> about you, right? So it doesn't have to just be so narcissistic, focused on you. You probably follow a lot of influencers. Maybe you followed me back in the day. Just people who are, you know, sharing about their own lives in a way that is hopefully inspiring to someone. But you want to think about it as, okay, I'm a startup business. Maybe I'm not an influencer and someone who is just interesting or really good looking or whatever. You don't have to be that. You get to be the hero. You get to be someone that's helping other people and you want to help this person, right? You don't want to just post about your life and hope that they connect. You want to think, okay, who are they and what do they want? The faster you can speak their language, the faster that Bethany knows, oh my God, Amanda is creating content directly for me. I love her and I want to follow her. The faster Bethany knows that, the more quickly she's willing to engage with you and engage with your content and potentially become a client of yours. So you want to know who they are? Pick this guy back up. And you want to know what's going on with them. So it's not necessarily just demographics. So demo is going to be like age, gender, location. However, I like to think of my ideal client or audience member as a type of person with characteristics. So my audience member is conscious. They are heart centered. Maybe they are action takers. Maybe they are sick of watching a bunch of how-to videos <laughs> and just wanna get down to it and finally learn exactly what they need to learn. So that's my ideal audience member. And there's a lot more that goes into who they are, but you wanna think about the characteristics and where they're at in life. 
What, you know, did they go to Starbucks? Are they someone with a dog? Are they someone who is just at a place in their life where they're really frustrated with X, Y, and Z? Like you wanna figure out who that person is so you can talk directly to them and their day-to-day -day experiences in life. So after you figure out who this person is, you wanna figure out, okay, what do they need? Like, what does Bethany need right now? Bethany's struggling with building her business, creating content. She's struggling with knowing exactly what the right steps to take are. She's so sick of watching a bunch of videos because she feels like there's a million things out there and she doesn't know which direction to take and she needs someone that just can give her clear direction. So she's struggling with that and I know exactly how to create content that's going to help her in her situation. She's going to say, oh my God, I feel like I have a clear direction now. I know what to do with my content. I'm gonna take this and take action on it. And that's what she's gonna do. So maybe your ideal client is different. But you wanna think about what do they need and you wanna like dump a list out of your head and then write just a bunch of ideas that are going to be, okay, what do they need? Write them all out, think of titles. So this one is Let's Talk Content, and that means that Bethany's gonna be interested in clicking on Let's Talk Content. So whatever ideas that you have for your ideal client, you wanna write them down in the form of a potential title or a headline for a video or a hook for an Instagram caption. Anything along those lines is gonna be interesting to your person, whether they're Bethany or Bob or whoever. Number three, it is going to be, you're just gonna be so mad at me for this one, but it's gonna be like the most annoying one. So guess what? You're a business owner, your business has to make money, you have to make money, so you actually have to do work. <laughs> it's funny, I know. Um, and it means you might have to spend some time doing things that you don't really wanna be doing. They're not gonna be that fun. Um, this one's gonna be like really annoying for you. You're gonna have to sit down and maybe spend a couple of hours doing this one. And this is something that so many people don't do and they skip over because it's annoying, but you actually have to do it. It's something that's incredibly necessary. I didn't do this in the beginning, but because I spent three years giving out free content all the time without anything attached to it, aside from like sponsorships and stuff, I know exactly what's going on here, but if you don't, you need to do this. So this is gonna be market research. Market research. <laughs> so that means if you don't know what do they need and you're sitting here wondering what number two even is for you, you need to go figure it out. Because if you don't figure it out, you're gonna be spending all of your time writing captions, making videos, and they're never going to connect to this person. They're never gonna connect and they're never gonna find you and they're never gonna feel connected to you and they're never gonna engage with you. And then you're gonna be like, I'm making all these posts and I don't know why I'm getting not getting engagement and I don't know why I'm not getting this, this and that. And this is why. You're like, you need to speak the language of your person. So whether that means taking them out to dinner, dinner, dinner date. <laughs> so if you know who your ideal client is, maybe there's someone who's a friend of yours. Take them out to dinner, go to lunch, maybe just do like a FaceTime interview with them or something and be like, hey, I'm doing a business, I have a ton of questions, I think you'd be an ideal client. We don't have to work together, but I just wanna ask you a bunch of stuff about like why you're struggling. So it, have, it can be like no strings attached, you're not trying to get them to be a client, but you just wanna gather info. And I actually had a friend of mine do this to me where we had like an hour long conversation and he was asking me like, okay, if you were to have a program about this, this, and this, what would you need to, to be in it? If you were to have a coach that was gonna teach you this, what would, what would be the most amazing thing for you? Like, what would you not wanna miss out on? What would be like a bad experience for you? And like all of these questions that will allow you to be really, really clear on what they need. So when they, when they tell you that stuff, you wanna write it down. So maybe they say, if you're a fitness coach, I am super frustrated. I have tried this kind of diet, Weight Watchers, Paleo, Keto, Vegan, all of these things, and my body's still the same. I feel really frustrated. I don't know what any of it means. I'm super confused. I don't know who's who and what's what. I, I just don't know who to trust at this point. I'm feeling a lack of trust. I'm feeling like I'll never get anywhere. You wanna create a video or an Instagram post that says, are you feeling like you have tried all five different diets and you don't know who to trust anymore. Like you wanna use the exact verbiage that they say so they can say, oh my God, she's reading my mind. Holy shit, how, how did you just read my mind? And you want that to happen because then they're gonna be incredibly intrigued with what you have to say. So you wanna figure out what they need and then you also wanna figure out what is already working. Just because your favorite fitness influencer made a video about intermittent fasting doesn't mean you can't make a video about intermittent fasting. There are 
pretty much no original ideas anymore. There are millions of Instagram posts posted a day, hundreds of thousands, probably millions of YouTube videos posted every day. Do you think there are that many ideas that exist in the world? Probably not. Everyone says the same stuff, but they create it in a way that works for them in their brain, that makes sense for them, that's original to them. You and your personality and what you have to say in your brain are is what that's what's original and that's what gets people to be excited about you. So people don't buy informationally, they buy emotionally and they buy because of your human experience that you have, right? So you wanna figure out what's already doing well. So maybe there are types of posts that are doing well on Instagram, maybe there are types of videos that are doing well on YouTube, maybe there's certain headlines, maybe there's certain lighting, maybe there's certain poses, maybe there's, you know, we all know that butt selfies do well on Instagram, so like you can do one of those if you want, but you'll also have to go watch my last video. There's that, but anyways, you wanna make sure that you're recreating things that are already doing well, not because you're copying people, but because the market already wants it. It's already proven to work. People are already interested. And that for you means, okay, people are already interested, there's already people out there that are gonna like this. Maybe those are my people. Maybe they're waiting for me. Maybe they're gonna connect with me and not this person. Or maybe they connect to everybody because the world is abundant and there's enough success to go around. So you wanna recreate stuff that's already doing well. A lot of people repost stuff that's already doing well, which I'm not the biggest fan of because, I don't know, I think everyone should be somewhat creative and create their own stuff, but you can repost stuff on Instagram that's done well as long as you credit the person, but I recommend you just recreate something on your own that's a similar idea, but just in your own way. Number four, it's gonna be pretend you already have a big audience. This one's a good one. The reason for this is because when you don't have a big audience and you tell yourself, oh my God, I'm a nobody. I don't have an audience yet. I feel like I'm talking to nobody. The way that you act, the way that you communicate, the way that you come across is completely different. Imagine if you were in a room talking to nobody. How different would you sound if you literally saw hundreds of thousands of people in a crowd? Would you act differently if it was in person? Yes, you would. So I want you to act as if you're talking to hundreds of thousands of people in a crowd and you're on a stage. You don't necessarily need to be like super presenty and like, here's my info and like blah, 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 like I'm kind of doing right now. You can be casual and relaxed and just maybe you're talking to just a friend. So it's kind of a combination. Social media is really, really interesting in how you have to go about talking, but it's a combination of like, pretend you're on a stage with hundreds of thousands of people, but also pretend you're just back and forth with a friend at the same time. So it takes practice to, to think about, okay, if you were speaking to this many people, how confident would you be? Or if you knew that this many people were listening, what would you say, right? But the way that you have to also come across is that it has to be conversational. It has to be like you're just talking with a friend. So pretend that maybe the, Maybe the idea of like having that many people is scary to you and then you're just in your own shell and you're terrified. Pretend that it's just one person, but what would you say to that one person if it was the only message that you can send them? Would it be confident or would it just be shy and reserved? I am a shy reserved person. I am an introvert by nature and it's easy for me to just be the sit back. Let me just listen and observe the conversation rather than take control of the conversation. But when you're you know making videos or maybe you're just writing an Instagram post, you're technically in a room by yourself. So you are in your best space to create because you are in your, your genius zone there, right? So this one's gonna be pretend you already have an audience. Next one, we have two more y'all. No, we have one more. <laughs> this one's gonna be fun too. You're not gonna be too happy with me because this is gonna have to do with you doing stuff that might be hard and annoying. Hair, I am like the worst handwriter in the whole world. Can you give this it video? It looks like core. Core? Do the A Hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I were the teacher, my students would just be like, did you write? <laughs> Sorry guys, I don't like write in front of people often. Okay, so care about the quality of your pics and vids. Ha <laughs> Okay, so. If I ever go to someone's Instagram, I used to do engagement audits on my other channel. So when I was looking at other people's Instagrams and they were like, okay, oh, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Number one thing is just care more about your pictures. And it takes a long time. It, it can take a long time to get really good at taking good photos, to get used to taking photos of yourself, to get over the fact that it's not narcissistic if you're taking selfies and photos of yourself because it's for your business and your brand and you have to do it because it's your billboard and your personal brand and people connect with you and buy, buy from you. So it's okay that you're taking pictures of yourself. It took me a long time to mentally get over that 
and realize that no, I'm not being a narcissist. I am just like people connect with humans. So I have to take a picture of my human body because no one's gonna connect with this fucking Sharpie. Like I can't just take a picture of the Sharpie and then talk about something because no one's gonna be excited to engage with that because it's not a human. Humans engage and then objects, you know, they don't. <laughs> so super insightful, I know. So back to caring about your pictures and images. Make sure that you, you know, maybe you're seeing and you're doing your market research and you see, okay, people like selfies. Take some selfies, but don't make your whole entire feed kind of like crappy selfies. Like you do want to go out, maybe get a photo shoot, maybe try to find someone who's a friend or a boyfriend or something that can take photos of you. Maybe explain this to them. Maybe make them watch this video of me right now and say, hey, significant other, your girlfriend or boyfriend is not a narcissist. They just want to build a business brand, make an impact on the world. And the way to do that right now is on Instagram because it's one of the most engaged growing platforms in the whole entire world. And it's just a place to be if you want to build an awesome business and your person is super ambitious. So congratulate them and be proud of them for that. There's some noise happening. And then, you know, take pictures of them if they ask you. So just get someone to take photos of you. You will, you know, continue to expand your content as you get more practice. Like I used to take really crappy photos of myself too, but the more practice that I got, the more I did it, the more I had people take pictures of me, the more natural that it became. It's not gonna be natural at first, but you do wanna be a human on social media because people connect with humans. So if you're just taking a picture in the gym, it's really dark and you don't want anyone to see you and then you take a picture and then you post it because like, okay, I got something and it doesn't do well. It's kind of just a waste in a way. Like, yes, you want to post consistently every day, but the best way to make this happen is not necessarily to go about your week. If you're just getting started, especially, it's not necessarily to go about your week and then try to take pictures of yourself as you're like living life. Maybe you have a full-time job, maybe you have a kid, maybe you just want your gym time to yourself. Maybe for you, this is gonna mean taking two hours out of your Saturday and then taking some pictures of yourself and having someone do it and go outside and like do something fun or whatever and like laugh and take some fitness pictures or take some photography pictures or beauty pictures or whatever. Like separate the time to do that and then you just have a bunch of them ready to go. And that makes it so much easier for you too and you don't have to feel like you have to go about your life and put makeup on every day and like all of that stuff. It doesn't have to be in the moment but it does have to be quality. So I would say that large majority of people don't care enough about this and because there's hundreds of millions of Instagram posts posted every minute, you have to care to stand out. It's necessary. So that's gonna be my video for Let's Talk Content. If you are not doing any of these things, you need to start doing them and we're gonna be talking a lot more about this as we go on in the series. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up for me if you liked it. Give it a share if you know someone that needs to see it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.